every star in the sky mm -hmm. probably has planets. Yep. And life is probably emerging on these planets. But this the amount of contingency that is associated with life is that I think the combinatorial space associated with these planets is so different. We are never going to, our causal cones are never going to overlap or not easily. And this is the thing that makes me sad about alien life. Why it's why we have to create alien life in the lab mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. Yeah. Because I don't know if we are going to be able to be able to build um, architectures that will intersect with alien co uh, intelligence co and architectures. In, in intersect, you, you don't mean in time or space? Time and the ability to communicate. So the ability to communicate. Yeah. My biggest fear, in a way, is that life is everywhere, but we become infinitely more lonely because of our scaffolding in that combinatorial space. Because it's so big. and so, so you're saying the... The constraints created by the environment that led to the factory of Darwinian evolution are just like this little tiny cone in a nearly infinite combinatorial space. And exactly. So there's other cones like it, and and what? You know, why can't we communicate with other? Like, just because we can't create it doesn't mean we can't appreciate the creation, right? Like that. Uh, de sorry, detect the creation. I, I I truly don't know, but I it's an excuse for me to ask for people to give me money to make a planet simulator. Yeah, yeah right. So if I can make <laughs> with a different, a different kind like of like another shameless say, it's like give me money. I need this, money. <laughs> this was all a long plug for a planet simulator. It's like, it's like you know, hey, I won't be the first in line to donate. My 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 uh, my <laughs> Rick my Rick garage has run out of room. You know. Yeah. No. Um. And is, this is. A planet simulator, you mean like a different kind of planet yeah. or different set, sets of environments it, and pressures. Exactly. If we could basically recreate the selection before biology, yeah. uh, as we know it, that gives rise to a different biology, we should be able to put the constraints on where to look in the universe. So here's the thing. Here's my, here's my dream. Yeah. My dream is that by creating life in the lab based upon constraints we understand. So let's like go for Venus-type life or Earth-type life or something. Again, do Earth 2.0. Screw it. Let's do Earth 2.0. And Earth 2.0 has a different genetic alphabet. Fine. That's fine. D different um, protein alphabet. Fine. Have cells and evolution, all that stuff. We will then be able to say, okay, life is a more general phenomena. Selection is more general than the, what we think is con the chemical constraints on life. And we can point to James Webb and other telescopes at other planets that we are in that zone we are most likely to con combinatorially overlap with mm -hmm. right so because you know we basically sure. so there is chemistry you're looking for some overlap and then we can then basically um shine light on them literally and sh white look at light coming back and apply advanced assembly theory to lang general theory of language that we will get and say ha huh, we in that signal it looks random, but there's a copy number. Oh, this random set of things that shouldn't be that, that looks like a a true and random number generator mm -hmm. has structure as a not com, not Komogolorov AIT type structure, but mm -hmm. evolutionary structure given by assembly theory, and we start to. Um, but I would say that because I'm a shameless assembly theorist. Yeah, I it just feels like the the cone. I might be misusing the word cone here, but the width of the cone is growing faster, uh, is growing really fast to where eventually all the cones overlap. I, Which, uh, like, um, even in a very, very, very large combinatorial space. I, I, it just, but then again, if you're saying the universe is uh, also growing very quickly in terms of possibilities. I, that's re I hope that as we build as we build abstractions the main i mean one one idea is that as we go to intelligence intelligence allows us to look at the regularities around us in the universe and that gives us some common grounding to to discuss with aliens and and you might be right that that, that, there, that we will overlap mm -hmm. there even though we have completely different chemistry uh, literally completely different chemistry um, um that we will be able to pass information from one another mm -hmm. but it's not a given and um you know i have to kind of try and divorce 
hope and emotion, you know, a, a, sure. away from what I under, I can logically justify. But it's just hard to intuit a world, a universe where there's nearly infinite complexity objects and they somehow can't detect each other. But the just... universe is expanding. But the nice thing is that I would say, I would look, you see, I think Carl Sagan did the wrong thing. Well, not the wrong thing. He, he flicked the Voyager probe around and a pale blue dot mm -hmm. said, look how big the universe is. I would have done it the other way around and said, look at the Voyager probe that came from the planet Earth that came from Luca. Mm -hmm. Look at how big Earth is. Mm -hmm. That it produced that. It produced that. Yeah. And that I think is like completely amazing.